Hey there, good to see you. A few days ago here on my channel, I posted a video about using filters on drones like this DJI Air 2S here. And the video attempted to answer the question of, you know, which filters are best for aerial photography, which are best for aerial video. And the video was also an overview and a qualitative comparison of the different filters that are made by Freewell for the DJI Air 2S, including solid NDs, hybrid NDs, variable NDs, diffusion mist variable NDs, and circular polarizers. That video contains a lot of content, and if you haven't seen that video yet, I will link to that video up here and down below. I'm making this follow-up video on the same topic because when I went back and edited that video, there was this one particular part that I felt was just a bit out of context and I felt it slowed the video down and the video was better without it. So I decided to take that out and separate it into its own video, which is the one that you're looking at here. So anyway, the part that I cut was a demonstration of how to choose the appropriate ND filter when you are trying to follow the 180 degree shutter rule, when you are trying to slow down the shutter speed on the drone and you're trying to get it to say 1 50th of a second when shooting at 24 frames per second, um, you know, like 1 60th of a second when shooting at 30 frames per second. How do you know when you are out in the field and you're setting up the drone and getting ready to take off, how do you know which filter to use? What strength do you need in order to get the exposure down to a matching shutter speed, a shutter speed that will match your frame rate? Well, here is the part of the video where I demonstrate that. Okay, so let's say you wanna create something similar. You wanna get some motion blur in your shot. Perhaps there's a subject in motion, like a waterfall or maybe a car that's moving quickly, or you plan on putting the, the, the drone in like a sport mode and flying quickly across the landscape where uh, stationary objects are gonna be flying past the camera and you would expect there to be some blur. Well, let me demonstrate for you how I typically go about doing that. So I have the drone down here on the floor uh, with a light pointed at it because the drone is just way too noisy to be up here near the mic. It's just really, really distracting. So it's down there. What I typically do first is uh, set my ISO. So you want it at its lowest value and I'm choosing ISO 100 here, set it to a fixed value and a frame rate of 24 frames per second so that when paired with 1 50th of a second, we get that maximum motion blur effect. Now, the important thing to do here in the beginning is to set your shutter speed to auto. So I currently have it set to auto and it's telling me that 1 400th of a second is necessary to bring the exposure down. So the next step is figuring out which ND filter we need in order to get that shutter speed down from 1 400th of a second to 1 50th of a second. And the way you do that, uh, or at least there's a number of ways you can do it. Uh, you know, one would just be holding filters up in front of the, of the camera lens and turning on zebras, exposure warnings. Uh, open up your histogram too, take a look at that and just eyeball it. Another way would be to use an app like PhotoPills where you can type in uh, your exposure values and it will tell you how many stops of ND you need. But something that I've gotten in the habit of doing is just doing it myself, just counting backwards by turning off auto exposure. And let me show you how that works. So you would just turn off auto exposure here. We're going to count in one third increments, one, one third of a stop increments. So here we go. So we're just gonna do one, two, three. That's one stop. Uh, one, two, three, that's two stops. And then one, two, Three, okay, so we are exactly three stops away from where we need to be. So with that, we could either use a variable ND like this one made by Freewell here and just turn the dial until uh, the white tick mark is on the number three here, or you may use a hybrid ND or a solid ND. And these hybrid and solid NDs, they use a different uh, like nomenclature for their for their naming, ND2, ND4, ND8, ND16, ND32, you've probably seen this before. An easy way to remember that is just ND2 is equal to one stop, and when you double that to ND4, that's two stops, ND8 is uh, three stops, etc. So we need an ND8 solid ND or hybrid ND. Okay, so I have the ND gate filter uh, snapped onto the front of the drone down here, and we can see that the image is now properly exposed because down here in the lower right-hand corner of the DJI Fly app, you will see plus 0 0.3, which is pretty darn close to zero. I mean, that's close enough in my book. Uh, zero meaning it is properly exposed. It's not overexposed, it's not underexposed, it's just right. So it's just a touch overexposed, but that's perfectly okay. And now with these settings in place, my shutter speed is now optimized for my frame rate and I'm ready to take off and start shooting video.
So yeah, that's it. Hopefully that was helpful. If that was confusing to you before and you weren't exactly sure what you were supposed to do uh, with the drone once, um, you know, once you buy a pack of ND filters. One additional tip that I'll share with you since we're here and having a conversation about this is to you know, be aware of what's happening with the light in the environment in which you are going to be flying the drone and capturing video. For example, if you are flying the drone in the middle of the day, well, the light probably isn't going to be changing that much. But if you are shooting early in the morning or late in the afternoon, uh, you know, which is, are the times of day that, that I prefer to, you know, to be capturing photos and videos. Well, if you're flying early in the morning, like blue hour, golden hour, the light is going to be getting incrementally brighter as the drone is in the, in the air. Whereas later in the day, it's going to be getting incrementally darker. So in addition to like pre-visualizing your shot and deciding whether or not you want to use an ND filter, whether or not um, you want to be slowing down your shutter speed, I think it also helps to pre-visualize what is going to be happening with the light, what you expect to happen. For example, if you're flying early in the morning and you expect the light to be getting incrementally brighter, you could set your initial ISO value to a higher uh, value like 800. Now I know 100 is better for noise and all that, but if you begin your ISO at a setting of 800 and you calculate which ND filter is appropriate for ISO 800 and your uh, chosen shutter speed and frame rate, well then, while you are flying, while the drone is in the air and the light is getting brighter, you have some play there. You have some latitude with your exposure settings where you could be pulling back that ISO from 800 down to 400 and then finally down to 100, which is better than beginning your flight with it, um, with ISO all the way down at 100 because, you know, with a fixed aperture drone like, uh, like the Air 2S here, you're not gonna have um, any additional tools in the toolbox to be working with. There's no way that you're going to be able to get your exposure brighter. And then the same principle would apply later in the afternoon, except there the light is going to be getting incrementally darker. So you could begin your flight, say, at uh, an ISO value of 100 all the way down to the bottom. So you could be raising it as need be. Another option would be to um, would be to set your initial exposure settings to a higher shutter speed and frame rate, and, and you know then so that you have some latitude to be pulling back that shutter speed, to be slowing down that shutter, and to be letting more light in. So again, my point here is that you know when the drone is on the ground prior to takeoff, when you plan on shooting video, just think about how long do you expect the drone to be in the air, and whether the light around you is going to be changing when determining what your exposure settings should be and which ND filter you should use. Or of course, if you are using a drone that has a variable aperture, which certainly makes things easier, like the new Mavic 3, well, in the morning, you could uh, set your initial aperture to f2.8, and then as the light is getting brighter, you would just stop your aperture down. And then you would do the opposite later in the afternoon. You would begin with a uh, with you know a more stop down aperture, something like, I don't know, f5.6, f8, something like that. And then mid-flight, you would be opening up that aperture in order to be brightening your exposure as the light is getting darker. And you know, in general, on that topic of aperture, I mean, that is definitely one of the things that I miss about owning the Mavic 2 Pro, which I owned and used before the 2S, but I sold that and got a 2S instead because uh, because this drone is smaller, lighter, has smaller, lighter batteries as well, which it may not sound like that big of a deal, but when you're carrying around multiple batteries, especially if you are flying with them and you have to put these things in your carry-on, I mean, those Mavic 2 batteries were pretty big and I like the, the longer flight time of the Air 2S and the image quality is great. Like I, I think for, you know, for the price, I feel like the Air 2S is just a really exceptional value, especially compared to the price of the new Mavic 3. But I really, really do miss having that variable aperture because the fixed 2.8 aperture of the 2S really does box you in when you're using ND filters and the only things you can then edit are ISO and shutter speed. So yeah, I mean, my hope for the future crossing fingers is that, you know, when DJI gets around to coming out with an Air 3 or Air 3S or whatever that the drone has a variable aperture in it, not the fixed aperture like this F 2.8 here on the 2S. Otherwise, Love this drone. I love the 2S, but the fixed aperture, I'm not the biggest fan of, especially because it just so limits what you're able to do mid-flight, especially when you have ND filters mounted on the front. Something I would love to see uh, added to a drone someday would be integrated physical mechanical ND filters in the gimbal itself, similar to like a cinema camera, like, um, like, the, like the C70 that came out a while back. I mean, imagine being able to you know, with the drone in the air, mid-flight while it's flying, pull up the DJI Fly app, 
choose which density of ND filter you want, and a little pane of glass would just pop up, just, you know, inside of the gimbal, right in front of the camera lens. That would be amazing. That would be so cool. And that would give you so much control mid-flight over your exposure and being able to change your shutter speed and your frame rate while the drone's in the air. I'd tell you this much, if that was a feature of the Mavic 3, no question about it. Like I would have ordered that drone day one and that drone would be sitting here on the table right now. All right, everyone, as usual, if you would like to hang out with me again in the future and see another video, remember to subscribe to this channel down below so you can be notified of new videos when they come out in the future. And also take a second to give this video a thumbs up if it was worth your time and if you learned something from it, uh, it really does help. And uh, I would appreciate it. That's it, everyone. I will see you next time.